Hello everyone, and today we are shooting another video. Now I hope you guys are doing okay, hope you guys are feeling good. Yeah, I hope your applications are going well, hope your interviews are going well, hope your general life's going well. And, um, yeah, I don't really know what this intro is. I'm sort of forced, I don't really feel like doing an intro today. So without further ado, let's just get into the video, I think. Um, today, um, well, actually, I was planning on doing a video about mistakes I made uh, during my A-level. Now, if you guys want to see my mistakes during the GCSEs video, you might want to go and have a look at that. I'll leave in the description below. So, if you want to have a look at that, you're more than welcome to do that. However, I, I am shooting a video today about something a little different. Now, I just realised, you know, before making my A-level video, um, a lot of people have been leaving comments down below about how I did my interview for Imperial, how I, you know, did my volunteering for Imperial, how I did my BMAT for Imperial, and they're generally asking me the same question, and that question is, how did you get into Imperial College London for Medicine? And now I, I've been on YouTube, and there aren't many videos specifically about how to get into medicine at Imperial College, and specifically, because obviously each university is different, and the application pathway is different, so I thought I'd shoot a little video today about how to get into Imperial Medicine, and you know, that university specifically. So it might not apply to some of the other ones, but this is more about Imperial College. Now, before we go into the video, um, obviously if you like this video, and if you want me to keep doing videos about Imperial College more specifically, um, hit the like button so I can get a general, you know, census of how much you guys like this specific type of video. But yeah, and also, please hit the subscribe button. We um, are on about 145 subscribers at the moment, so it'd be super cool if you guys could just hit the subscribe button. I want to get to 200 subscribers by about, you know, end of March. And if we do that, maybe we can do a QA. and um, I know we did one for 100 subscribers and we have some questions left over that I didn't answer. And if you guys want to answer me any more questions, if you guys want to ask me any more questions, I anticipate there'll be a lot more of you this time, obviously, because there's 200 subscribers, so it's double the number of people who will be regularly watching my videos, hopefully. So if you've got any more questions, you can always send them to me via social media, which will be on the screen here. Really appreciate my new little animation I've got here, so that's cool. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. So um, how did I get into Pill College London Medicine? It's a really difficult question to answer, and it's quite packed, so I'm going to try and skim over basically the basics. And if you guys obviously want me to go into more detail, feel free to let me know in the comments below, or to um, go smash the like button down below. So that's basically the easiest way for me to gauge which videos you guys like best, and that's pretty much how I make my video. First thing I would say in terms of how I got in was I looked at their website. Now Imperial College London, it might seem obvious, but Imperial College website obviously set up and they have a website for medicine specifically. And the best way to get a gauge or get an understanding of whether you want to apply for Imperial College is to have a look at their website, have a look at what they offer, their course, um, their pathway, because Imperial College London is a unique course, I'd say. It's sort of thrown into the traditional university bag, you know, with UCL, Cambridge, but it's a little bit more modern now and it's getting towards the style of medicine which is sort of like PBL but not so much and we learn a lot by looking at practical cases so we do GP placements early on we look at diseases more than the functioning of the human body in a way that's how we learn and it's very different to sort of your standard university and it's also different from the sort of other side of the scale so you know Cardiff University um, other universities like Manchester who primarily work on PBL. It's sort of very different. It's in its own sort of little area. And there's no other university like Imperial. So before applying, I would say make sure to check this out or ask somebody about Imperial College. But yeah, I gather that might not be too helpful, but hopefully just explains that Imperial isn't quite as easy as putting it into traditional or PBL. Um, it's very different. Um, it's sort of integrated, but it's, it's in its different, it's sort of in a different category to all the other universities, and it's very unique in that sense. I think Imperial actually do not care about the interview a lot. Um, the reason I say that is the number of people who they call to interview um, is very similar to the number of people who get accepted. So pretty much if you've been called to interview, you are likely to get a place at Imperial College, which is good because um, usually interviews are where they like to cut people. Most universities, most medical universities and schools like to make their final decisions at the interview stage. But Imperial, on the other hand, make their decisions beforehand. And people used to say, well, it's about the BMAT, therefore. That's again not necessarily true. Imperial aren't very cutthroat on their BMAT. What I believe they look at from that is either the personal statement or the report that they'll get from your school. Now, if you guys don't know about this, your school or your college will send off a little report or their own little sort of like a sheet of paper with 
you know, what they think of you as a student and, you know, your strengths, your capabilities. It'll contain all your exam performances in it. It'll contain your exam marks. It'll contain analysis that the school have done over your entire seven or two years at the school, if it's a school or a college. And um, they'll have in-depth, you know, real understanding of you as a student and they'll package that all into a little report and they'll send it off to the university. Now, a lot of people don't think about this, which is why they say, oh, you know, it's only exams that matter. For medicine, it's not exams that matter. Um, they, they do matter a lot, obviously, they uh, make it or break it, really, but your learning at school on how you do at school really matters. So if you get sort of end of term little grades or sort of like reports, People say they don't matter, you know, you don't need to worry about reports or anything, but they do really matter. For a medical application, you need to have a consistently strong performance throughout your school life. Now that might be a little bit of a disappointing realization that you've got to keep this going throughout school, but you know, it is true. In medicine, your school report will be super important to university. So I would highly recommend you guys take a real care, you know, in terms of your performance throughout this whole school year, not just at your end of your examination. And especially for Imperial, they clearly look at something apart from your interview. So personally, I think it's from your school report. Um, people may say that it's from BMAT, but for me, I just don't see them cutting that many people through the BMAT procedure. And I think it's from your school report. So I would highly recommend you guys take real in-depth uh, calculation over how you conduct yourself during school and how you conduct yourself during school assessments and etc. BMAT, I'll be honest, I fudged it a little bit. I, I got 5.9, 5.1, 3.5a, which isn't an incredible score. Um, obviously, it wasn't brilliant, but you know, it did the job. And again, it just shows an Imperial, they don't really have too much importance on the BMAT. You know, I think Oxbridge um, care a lot about BMAT, to be fair. They, you know, you need a really good BMAT to get into Oxbridge. But for Imperial, not too much really. They, they've got like basic pass marks, which you can access, I think on their website somewhere they'll have or in student room or anywhere, what those are, they're in band, so they've got band one, two, three, four, like situational judgment on the UCAT. And um, if you get above a certain mark, you're in band one, and basically they'll take you as long as you're band two and above, and if you've got band one, guaranteed into the grade, basically. So um, the bands aren't even that difficult. Band one is pretty much usually a 4.5 or a 5. It's pretty low. So they don't really care too much about the BMAT. What they do care is the interview. Now, for interview MMI, it's very standard their interview. So in terms of what you need to do to get in, all you need to do is be empathetic. They really want you to be empathetic. They like their students to come in with a good sympathetic um, and moral you know, balance in their body, in their brain. So they really want you to have an understanding what empathy is. They want you to be aware of the NHS. Um, Imperial is a very academic university, so they will expect you to come in with a good knowledge of the NHS and a good knowledge of empathy and sympathy and all those emotional things. They won't be willing to go through the basics with you. They pretty much go straight into practical cases. So they really want to be empathetic and have lots of empathy. They also want you to do done volunteering more than work experience, to be honest. Um, work experience is valued, obviously. They will ask you about work experience if you put it in, but volunteering is super valued. Um, I did about three to four years of volunteering, which is, I think, why I got into Imperial College. If I nail it down to one thing, I would say in my school report, but if not that, volunteering. I did three years about volunteering and they love it because it shows that you're active, you really want to get involved, you're actively engaged in medicine and you know, you really want to do it. So doing volunteering is the best way of showing that and it, you know, it means that you'll develop empathy as well, which is like killing two birds with one stone. You show your commitment and you develop empathy on the side as well. Um, you don't have to even actively read about empathy, about, you know, what to do in certain situations. For me, I don't have to do any of that. I just picked it up, you know, subconsciously when I was in care home. As I went on, I subconsciously began to pick up these things about empathy and sympathy, how to talk to people, people with Alzheimer's, dementia, all those things. I, I sort of picked up as I went along, and I think it's the best way of learning and preparation for the interview you can do. So for the Imperial interview, the best way of preparation is to do some volunteering. If it's in a hospital ward or a retirement home, anywhere, just do some volunteering, and it's the best way you can prepare for an interview. I guarantee that. So, um, that's it really. Thank you very much for watching guys. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you've got anything else you want me to do videos on, I'm more than happy to do that. So again, drop them in the comments below. I'm sort of running out of ideas at the moment, but I will be delivering. I will still be uploading regularly. So don't worry about that. Uh, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below. Please get us to 200 subscribers by mid-March, end of March. Uh, we really want to do that. Um, it, it's really nice to see someone subscribe. You don't have to do anything. It takes five seconds. Hit it down below, it's free. You know, you don't have to watch my videos if you really don't want to, but I recommend you do, obviously, so it's probably gonna be quite useful, I think.
But yeah, just hit the subscribe button down below. It makes me super happy just seeing that sub count go up a lot. I, I look at it quite a lot. So, you know, it's sort of a real-time progress for me, for me to just check how much subs, how many subs I'm getting. And yeah, it's just really nice for me to see subscribers coming in every day. So please do smash the subscribe button down below. Um, also, again, comment down below. Anything, you got questions, tips, anything. Uh, advice on my videos, literally anything, just drop in the comments below. And also, my social medias will be here um, in the fancy new social media animation we've got. So, yeah, please do follow me on there. All of those three, hit me up on there. We've got quite a few of you guys coming and messaging me on my social media, which I'm very happy to see again. You guys coming in, letting me know what you feel about my videos, anything you want. Um, I guarantee pretty much I'll get back to you. Social life isn't great, but yeah, I will get back to you very quickly. Uh, so yeah, please do get back to me or message me on them if you want to. And follow me on there, add me on Snapchat, Instagram and Twitter. That's it, hope you've enjoyed the video guys and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.